The animated series Justice League was undoubtedly the greatest animated superhero show that has ever been made to date, and quite possibly the greatest superhero show period. It had compelling characters, it dealt with adult themes, and is one of the most faithful to comic shows that has ever existed. And one of the things I liked most about it was how dark it would get at times. Some plots had a rogue Amazon trying to wipe out every male on the planet in an act of viral weapon genocide, and some saw Green Lantern on trial for accidentally killing 3 million people, only to find out that it was a frame job. In fact, this is actually one of the hardest videos I've ever made, as there are just so many dark moments to choose from in a series that casually has Superman sold into slavery and made to fight to the death in a Roman-style arena. And although we all enjoy a happy and cheerful story, it's really the dark, twisted moments of a story that stick with us over the years. I'm mainly thinking of when little Simba found Mufasa's dead body. I mean, that is a dark moment that I still remember to this day, and it was actually a beautiful scene in a horribly tragic way. And so this video is going to go over the five darkest moments and storylines that the Justice League show has ever had. And when I say Justice League, I'm including both Justice League the Animated Series and the follow-up series Justice League Unlimited. I know some people consider them to be separate, but it was just a continuation of the same show with a slightly longer title, so I'm counting it. Aquaman cuts off his own arm. Now I actually remember watching this episode as a kid, and to be honest, I found it kind of boring on the whole. That is, until the moment that Aquaman and his son are about to be killed by falling into lava. His brother Orm is attempting a coup of Atlantis, and so he has to kill the king and his heir. And in true supervillain fashion, he doesn't just kill them, but instead he puts them in a death trap and then leaves, just assuming that they'll be killed. So the baby is hanging by a knife, and the king is chained to a rock that is falling into an underwater lake of lava. But of course, Aquaman can get out of his chains using his super strength. But the problem is that his son is going to be killed before he can get free. And the only way he can get free sooner is to tear off his own arm, so that he can save his son's life. Now, a lot of fathers in media, and in real life, will sacrifice their lives to save their children, which is extremely commendable. But it's a lot easier to sacrifice yourself by having someone else kill you than it is to cut off your own arm. Death is worse, of course, I know, but actually having to slice off your own flesh like this would be insanely difficult. And it not only shows Aquaman's love for his son, but it also shows his immense willpower at being able to cut off his own arm because I cannot emphasize enough how impossibly difficult that would be. Now this is actually slightly different than the comic book story in which his son actually dies, but it's still a grim moment, and personally, I actually think this is a better way of telling the story, and in some respects, much darker. After all, everybody dies eventually, I do, you do, we all do, and really, it's nothing to be scared of. After all, the dead don't feel any pain, so once you're gone, it's pretty chill. But having to live in a body that's been deformed, and deformed by yourself no less, well that's a true punishment, and a daily reminder of what happened. And the fact that Aquaman can make this sacrifice truly shows how much he loves his son. Injustice this is one of the darkest and best stories in not only this show, but any superhero show, period. First, we have Superman using his heat vision to murder Lex Luthor so that he never commits a criminal act again. And then we have the Justice League turning into the Justice Lords and taking over the governments of the world and instigating a totalitarian order with them in charge. But in my opinion, the worst moment is what Superman does to Doomsday. When Doomsday lands in Metropolis and fights the Justice League, Superman isn't doing that well in the fight, so he decides to blast his heat vision into Doomsday's skull, not killing him, but instead melting his brain and giving him a lobotomy. And the reason this is worse, in my opinion, is because we actually see it. Whereas Lex Luthor dies off screen, and we time skip the Justice League taking over the world, but we watch as Superman causes brain damage that leaves someone a mindless vegetable. It is true that thanks to his abilities, Doomsday eventually regenerates his brain, yes, but there's no evidence to suggest that Superman knew that that would happen. As far as we see, Superman just decides to mentally handicap someone because he looked dangerous and he thought the fight would be a bit more difficult than he was expecting. And yes, Doomsday is extremely dangerous and Superman could very well have lost, but Superman didn't really know that at the time and there were other ways he could have dealt with this, ways that wouldn't have left Doomsday a vegetable. And then later, in this alternate Superman's home universe, 
we see the villains of Arkham Asylum, and both Poison Ivy and the Joker have identical burn scars from Superman's heat vision, and it becomes very clear that if anyone steps out of line, then Superman just heat visions them a lobotomy. A man with the power of a god who will melt your mind if you step out of line, so you can't ever step out of line again. I mean, that's a pretty chilling thought, and is actually rather reminiscent of the Red Sun Superman. Ace dies of an aneurysm. The show Batman Beyond was cancelled, and the final episode of the show wasn't actually written to be the show's finale, as the writers didn't realise that it would end up being the final episode. So this episode of Justice League Unlimited was written to be the final episode of the show Batman Beyond, hence why it's called Epilogue. And in the story, Amanda Waller explains that she had Terry McGuinness's father injected with nanites during a flu shot that destroyed his reproductive material and replaced them with a copy of Bruce Wayne's. So she basically destroys his testicles and replaces them with another man's, which is insanely messed up. And I actually like to think that this episode is why so many conspiracy nuts think that flu jabs are bad for you. And she has this done because Batman was getting old and never had a son of his own so she decides to create him a son, though for some reason she doesn't count any of the Robins. And Amanda Waller also tells Terry McGuinness the story of how she wanted Batman to murder a little girl who was named Ace. This is because Ace has psychic powers and she's about to die of an aneurysm, and when she does, she might kill every person for miles with her brain. She might not, they don't know for sure, but they don't want to take the risk. So Batman plays along, but he doesn't actually intend to kill Ace. Instead, he just sits with her and keeps her company while she waits for the inevitable. And then we see Batman carry out the corpse of a small girl who was abducted as a child and moulded into a psychic weapon for the government, which is a very disturbing form of child abuse. And the scene before this is actually beautiful, as we watch Batman and Ace bond over being cheated out of their childhoods by others. And then it's insanely haunting as we see him carrying out her lifeless form. It's a dark moment that also touches the heart, and that means that it definitely deserves a place in this list. The Question is Tortured Later on in the show, the Question actually hacks into Cadmus files, and he finds out that the Injustice universe isn't actually an alternate reality, but it's actually a time loop. Meaning that in the future of their universe, Luthor will become president, and Superman will end up killing him, and the Justice League will take over the world. So in order to stop this from happening, the Question decides to murder Lex Luthor. It's the only way that he can see to save the world, because he's a crackpot so no one's really going to care that he killed him and it won't endanger the Justice League, and it'll stop Superman and the rest of them from going crazy and taking over the world. Bizarrely though, this well thought out plan doesn't exactly work, and the question ends up getting captured by Cadmus and tortured for information. And this is some pretty heavy stuff for a kids show, as we see his beaten and battered body repeatedly electrocuted for information. He is literally being tortured, and we're seeing it. And the question holds out, and is eventually rescued by Superman and the Huntress. And while there, Superman learns that one of his closest friends has not only betrayed him, but has also stolen DNA from his cousin Supergirl, and made a clone of her, who has been brainwashed into hating the Justice League. So, it's pretty nuts as well. And Cadmus has also turned Captain Atom against the League, who is then beaten up by Superman when he tries to stop them from leaving. And then to cap it all off, Lex Luthor remotely fires the Justice League space laser at a Cadmus base, injuring hundreds of innocent civilians, and possibly even killing some. All in all, this story gets pretty dark pretty quick, from brutal torture to the government turn against the Justice League and sending an army of superpowered clones to attack and kill every member of the Justice League on their watchtower. It's a dark episode. Hawkwoman Poisoned in an episode that sees Hawkwoman, Hawkman and Green Lantern look back at their past lives, Hawkman and Woman rule Egypt and are expanding their empire and using their superior Fanagar technology to do so. After all, if you do have super advanced alien tech on hand, why not use it? And everything is going great, except that Hawkwoman wants to have a child, and Hawkman wants to wait until the empire is finished, as he needs to focus on that and not on a child. Basically, he's focusing too much on ruling and his work and neglecting his wife. And so his wife and his best friend, whom is of course the future Green Lantern, start spending more time together. One thing leads to another and they end up having an affair. And one night, Hawkman sees the two of them together and realises what's been happening. And he says to himself that he wishes they were both dead. 
Unfortunately, his loyal servant overhears this, and so the servant poisons their wine, killing Hawkman's best friend and his wife. The servant thinks that he is just carrying out his pharaoh's wishes, but of course, he didn't really want them dead, he was just saying that to blow off some steam. And seeing their corpses on the bed with the wine dripping like blood, well, it's a pretty gruesome sight, and I'm actually a little surprised that the show was able to get away with this. But a love triangle that ends in a double homicide, well, that's a pretty adult theme, and a very dark moment for the series. And that is the five darkest moments in the Justice League show. And I do just want to say again that this actually is one of the hardest videos I've ever made. Seriously. Because there are just so many dark moments to choose from in this series. I mean, it is a fantastic show. And when you actually look at the content of the series, almost every episode has a moment which could have been on this list. But the five I mentioned are the five that I felt were the darkest. Not just due to the events of the episode, because like I said, there was an episode where Superman was sold into slavery. But weirdly, that's actually not that dark, because although the plot of it is dark, the tone in which it's represented wasn't that bad. And it's the tone that they strike with each of the episodes that really shows how dark they are. After all, superheroes deal with insanely evil villains and situations constantly, but the way it's presented is what makes us really feel for the characters and the situation that they're in. Like the episode where Wonder Woman is transformed into a pig. I mean, that's actually horrific when you think about it. I mean, imagine being turned into a pig and being made into a dumb animal with no intelligence, just rolling around in your own filth. It's horrible, just absolutely terrible to think about. But it's actually a comedy episode because the tone of the show is light, so it's not in any way a dark moment. It's all about how the story is told, and the ones that I have mentioned were deliberately meant to be dark moments. But I also have to say that every episode of this series was told in a truly masterful way. It's a really good show. But if there are any moments that you feel were worse and that you think should have been on this list instead, then please let us know in the comments, as I think we'd all like an excuse to talk about this show. And I'd just like to say a quick thank you to those who made this video possible by donating to the Needle Mouse Productions page on Patreon. And as always, thanks for watching and feel free to subscribe, share, like, and comment.